Greetings friends. Welcome to Jeb Adams channel. Thank you for viewing and subscribing and I hope that you do return again. Season 2, Episode 2, Vintage Sewing Machine Tools. Hi, this is Jeb Adams. This film is about the tools that I use every day, the most often used tools. It is not about the ones that I rarely or never use. Thank you for your time here. I appreciate it very much. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. This is a minimalist process, a show and tell, if you will. And uh, there is a list below of the companies whose products are talked about here today. But I am not sponsored by any of them or beholden uh, to them uh, in any business or legal sense of the matter. I, I'm totally independent. I'm totally self-funded. Today we'll look at five types of tools. Screwdrivers, pliers, lubricants, cleaners and brushes, and then a magnetic tray and some extras and accessories. Hold on a second while I make some room. There, that's better. These four screws over here, uh, screwdrivers over here, are uh, made by Weira Manufacturing from Germany. I bought these at the featherweight shop in uh, Idaho and uh, they sell a lot of great stuff. Uh, just to remind you, I'm not sponsored or working for any of these people. I just use these things because I find that they help me do my work and they give me good quality value. So, um, but when you do get them, this was a set of five. The fifth one is missing in, in storage somewhere, but uh, these are very unique in that they're quite long and especially this one, uh, the, the torque on it and the power you get to, you know, get uh, really tight varnished screws to, to snap loose, uh, it's really quite uh, 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 amazing. The, the ones on the right over here are uh, Mastercraft tools. I buy these at a, at a Canadian uh, store, Canadian Tire which uh, many people are familiar with. So, uh, so those are, I use those a lot as well. These I don't use too much. This one I use uh, occasionally or on a somewhat steady basis. The, the, that one I use uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, the other two I just kind of use as needed. I use the other one more, that's why it's not here. But these are very good. They're also, these two here, this one and this one, I'm able to take the, the bit out and replace it with uh, a Phillips or a larger uh, slot head. Same, same here. Uh, these screwdrivers are basic flat, uh, slot, flat head slotted screwdrivers and I like them for their long reach. So that's what's all about there. Um, I'm going to leave that one to last. Over here are some of the specialty screwdrivers like uh, offset screwdrivers, uh, the, the flat, flat head one and uh, the Phillips head one. I ended up with, a, I, they came as a pair or whatever or as a pack so uh, I occasionally use Phillips screws in restoring sewing machines but it's usually uh, slot, flathead, slot screws, and so as you can tell, especially your restorers, uh, these would be good for getting into tight spots, as is this one. This is, this is my little beast, you know, uh, because I can pretty much get it in most places. Having said that, this is a really, really handy little device, and it is magnetic. The bit, bits are magnetic. And as you restore, sewing machine restores and other restorers can, uh, you know, uh, mechanics can see, that in itself is, uh, is worth loads. And these are screwdrivers that I got with sewing machines. So, not this one. This one came in a small screwdriver set that I bought. Uh, the box is somewhere else right now, but I threw it in here. This device here, uh, from OEM tools. It's, mag it's a magnetic wand and it extends and it is worth its weight in platinum. 
Uh, that has saved me bending over and and actually the bending over I can live with that I need the exercise anyway but what it's really good for is finding tiny lost screws or washers on the floor um, before you have to vacuum the floor to find them you know that's always a messy job isn't it <laughs> so and then you know lastly certainly not leastly is the kit number 8900 and it's the gunsmithing uh, kit, gunsmithing tool kit but even in their literature and on, and on their website it states that these gunsmithing tools are good for sewing machines, fishing reels, a number of other things besides uh, gunsmithing but that's where their that's where their history is, that's where they came from is from gunsmithing you know, they they were they were built for that, but it's it's been applied. So, uh, but anyway, I'm going to expand on these uh, momentarily. But uh, I hope that uh, you you liked seeing this bit about the screwdrivers. I can't talk about screwdrivers without talking about Chapman screwdrivers. The quality and versatility make them an excellent value proposition. That means they're a good deal. I think right now this kit number 8900 sells at their website for $48 American. Everything is made in the, the USA. I like that too. One other important fact about Chapman is that the owner is a, is a lady business person. There are a number of women that uh, work at Chapman and here are the parts of the 8900 set. In the box, there are uh, 24 bits. There's two Phillips screw bits here, uh, a, sm a small one and a larger one. Then there are uh, a, a few, probably about seven or eight uh, Allen Allen wrench uh, or Allen, Allen hex head uh, bits. And then there's a couple of uh, converters for, for different sizes or whatever. Uh, the really nice thing is that there's about 12 slotted screw heads, flat head screwdrivers. So, so that's 24 pieces there and then we have another one, two, three, four pieces here. So it comes with 28 pieces all together. Here is the, the handle. Let me back out a bit here so we can get a, a better picture for a minute. So we need to get a little closer again. So here is the hander, handle, screwdriver handle. Uh, here is a, a ratchet or a mini ratchet. And when you look at the ratchet, for example, when you look at this side here, I've got to put it in the light. My old eyes uh, aren't uh... okay. So on this side, it says it has an arrow pointing that way to the left, and it says in. And then if you flip it around, the arrow is pointing to the, to the right, and it says out. So, and that, you can feel it, it will go to the right, it'll go counterclockwise, but it won't go clockwise, unless you turn it the other way, and then it'll go clockwise to tighten it, but it won't go counterclockwise. So that's a really nifty tool too. There is the... Um, the screwdriver shaft extension and uh, so that is, is a nice feature and then we have this little plastic thumb screwdriver and here I'll get a little closer I'll get a uh, why not go all the way and get a big one the other thing about these let me zoom in a little here The other thing about these bits is that on that end, and it's a little bit difficult to see here, but they're they're furled or knurled. There's there's cuts into the steel, and what that does is allows you to grip it with your thumb and forefinger or whatever, and have some traction 
to, to turn it. So that's the one way. Let me back out a bit so we can improve this zoom, this uh, focus. So that's the one way you can use this kit to, to work with, with, with screws and bits. So we'll put that there from, no, no, we won't, I'll keep it right here. The other way, the second way you can do it is if you need, a, for whatever reason, a little more traction in your hand, a little more um, support or whatever, it'll click right on there and you can use, use it close up in a tight spot, which we're always doing as restorers anyway. There's a little closer shot there. So, you know, I'll back out again so you can get the big picture. <laughs> and so I'll take that thumb dri screwdriver off. And then the other thing I can do, uh, using their tool, is putting it on the, the ratchet, the mini ratchet. And this is such a cool tool, you know. I don't know if there's a pun there, but whether there is or not, it's intended. And I want you to get a good look at it there. That's a good look. So, but it's a sturdy thing. I've used these, this set for a long, long time. Now, I've only been doing, you know, restorations for not that long. So when I say a long time, it's maybe like, you know, a couple of years or whatever, you know, not, not decades. So, so that's a handy feature. Let me go back again so we can get a, a bigger picture. I'll take the bit out of there and I don't think I've talked about how you can just put the bit directly into the screwdriver handle and then it's, it's, a, it's a stubby driver, a stubby screwdriver. And uh, we, as you all know, you know, from your experience, uh, the traction that that provides is, is certainly required in, in uh, certain situations. Um, a lot of the time it's just going to be the, the screwdriver extension. Let me back up a bit here. It's going to be the screwdriver extension with a bit, and that's all I'm going to need to, to get the job done. On two occasions, on two occasions, I took the screwdriver handle off, I inserted the, the ratchet, the mini ratchet, and it fits in and stops. There's marks for it to, to seat in there, and then put the handle back on. And just so you know, when you put the handle on that, when the ratchet is in there, that handle isn't locked on there. It's just seated in there on the, on the whatever you want to call that. Um, and so what that allows you to do is push down with a screwdriver to hold it very, very solid, very firm, very stable and then use the ratchet. And I've had to use that configuration twice. So you know, when you add it all up and we say, okay, well, use your thumb and forefinger is one way to do it. The, the plastic uh, thumb screw is another way. Then we've got that. Then we've got that. Then we've got that with that. Then we've got this with that. And then we've got this with that. There's like a good five or six combinations of how to use uh, we use these tools, this tool. So, you know, even as a Canuck having to pay for, uh, for, uh, for shipping in that, uh, because the shipping is expensive on these because they, you pay by weight, right? Size and weight. They're not huge, but uh, they are heavy. <laughs> but yeah, they're, uh, so I, you know, go to uh, Chapman Manufacturing to their website and you can get all sorts of information there. Uh, Chapman Manufacturing also has uh, a number of videos on YouTube, and uh, including one by the, the very lovely lady owner, um, and I forget the lady's name at this point, but uh, just to you know, give credit where fair credit is due, I found, about, found out about these Chapman screwdrivers for another, another uh, vintage sewing machine YouTuber, Andy Tube, and I know a lot of you listening to this right now know who I'm talking about. So once again, a, a flip of the lid and a big thank you, know, thank you call out to Andy Tube. And uh, I know he's wishing us the best, so we're gonna wish him the best. Anyway, I'll stop right there with that. So that's, that's what we've got there with the, 
um, Chapman uh, set. This is a middle of, of a mid range, a middle of the road set, or a mid set, a medium set. Their basic set, I believe, is the 9600. Then there's this one, the 8900, and then I believe the next one that's a little more complete, uh, the you know the, the supersizer, is. Uh, I think it's a 5575 model, 5575. But like I said, there's loads of information if you want to find out about these. There's loads of information uh, all over the place on the web. So, uh, and then of course, you can always come back to Jeb Adams and ask me and uh, I'll try and find out. Um, uh, so, moving on. Moving on, here are four tools, pliers. There are thousands of types of pliers, but here are just a few of, of those thousands. There are three needle nose pliers, one, two, and three, and here is a vice grip by Irwin. If you are new to pliers, go cheap, go small, and go simple. You already have pliers you like, no doubt. The red pair is my go-to pair, my first choice. The bottom left is uh, similar, although it does have, uh, it can be normally open, whereas this has no spring or, or pressure uh, lever, so my finger, my hand controls whether it's opening or closing or tightening. Um, the, the top right here, the third pair, of needle nose are uh, I use these all the time and these are curved needle nose pliers so those are so obviously when it comes to pliers I use needle nose pliers a lot in my restoration and uh, uh, repairing and that and then here of course is the uh, you know this is uh, made by Irwin tools out of the out of the US and this is a pair of ice grips now these are just good examples I don't have like a really basic pair of uh, pliers here apart from needle nose, but I do have two or three pairs in my toolbox, but as a minimum, because that's what this show is about, uh, that's what I use. So, um, you know, if you uh, would like to, to let us know what you're using, we always like to hear from, uh, from, from everybody, from people who, uh, who want to share. First, a quick reminder. Jeb Adams is not sponsored or paid by any of these manufacturers uh, slash suppliers that are uh, mentioned or shown here in this, in this film. I do consider lubrication to be uh, a useful tool when it comes to maintaining our beloved machines. Obviously, as you can see, I use TriFlow Superior Lubricants. Um, since I'm not sponsored and paid by everybody, I'm not going to wax eloquently about how much I um, like these products. I think you can see uh, the proof is in the, the video, in the film, that uh, I believe in these and, uh, and I use them. And I learned about these uh, TriFlow from other restorers here on YouTube and other places. So, uh, so I do like them. Uh, it is an excellent uh, lubricant and it is also a top-notch cleaner. Uh, oil and grease um, do have the ability to, to loosen up dirt and, or congeal it one way or the other, and, uh, and then it can be, they, it basically softens up varnish on sewing machines, um, you know, or, or solidified dirt, so that it can be wiped or brushed or, uh, um, you know, brushed really. And I'm talking about locations where you can't necessarily see the dirt, you know, in, in kind of hidden, unseen locations. So, uh, the other thing I'd like to mention is that grease is a time delay or slow release oil. Um, the, the grease here, the clear synthetic grease. The other thing I use the clear synthetic grease for um, is with extremely small screws, if I'm having a problem seating the, the, the first two or three threads into the, into the threads of the, the orifice, if I can't get them to line up and, and seat and then, you know, screw it in, then I get a little of grease 
and uh, put it in the orifice and then put the little screw on that and then I can uh, you know turn the screw without it uh, without it slipping out over lubricating should not occur here are the cleaning items that I use to clean the machines I would like to point out first and foremost is whoops geez I'm kicking the Stand. First and foremost, I'd like to point out this uh, liquid dishwashing soap. And uh, the, the liquid dishwashing soap you have in your kitchen or around your kitchen sink or under the kitchen sink is a really good cleaner. That's what I've discovered uh, these, these last number of years. So I give that really, really hard marks. Beside it in the really bright uh, gallon jug or four liter jug is cred cutter. Cred cutter is a stain remover, cleaner, degreaser. It is non-toxic, it is biodegradable, it is concentrated. There is no emergency uh, medical information on the, on the container uh, because it's organic. Uh, they, they say in their information, cred cutter site or whatever, that if you swallow it and your stomach feels uncomfortable, make a doctor's appointment. So they don't even suggest emergency services. But we're not going to be drinking it. With crud cutter, I'm very careful that after I get it near gears, if I even let it near gears, and I do, because quite often I clean the gears in crud cutter, but I'm very careful that once I apply the crud cutter, not to move the gears, you know, until I, and how do I get crud cutter off? Uh, water and dishwashing detergent and I also can dilute it and get it off especially around gears with uh, the tri-flow oil uh, or grease so but I use that a lot this is isopropyl rubbing alcohol rubbing alcohol and I don't use a lot of it as a cleaner, but I know a lot of restorers do. But I do use it around electric motors. Speaking of electric motors, here is an electrical contact cleaner. And I will spray motor parts like the copper windings and all those parts that we think that we should never uh, allow them to get wet or moistened, uh, that's what I use that for. It's a really good cleaner. Here I have a brand new package of brushes. There's uh, the brass, the uh, stainless steel, and then the plastic. There's a, a metal, a magnetic tray full of them. But they cost me four bucks at the dollar store. I get six of them, three little ones and three big ones. Uh, they're invaluable. I use them on a regular, daily basis when I'm in the throes of, um, you know, cleaning gunk off, off parts. The other, this is my favorite all-time little brush for getting inside sewing machines and really, especially in places where it's hard to see or you know that you're never going to be able to see or get your, you know, your little fingies back there. So really, really important. This one, anybody that has a sewing machine is familiar with this one. And uh, I use these a lot. Um, I, I sometimes buy them from the featherweight shop. Uh, check out the featherweight shop. And then there's a couple of, uh, this is a larger cleaning. I use this like on the interior of sewing machines a lot. This end here, especially where the motors are taken out of that cavity is kind of a large cavity so uh, that's ideal for for doing the larger parts and then it has a sm whoopsie daisy it has a smaller little brush on the on the little end there and then we have the dependable common paintbrush utility paintbrush this is this is not a high quality paintbrush it's for for you know cleaning up sewing machines and uh, housework and stuff so there's a quick overview of some of the cleaning things. Uh, I wanted to mention the magnetic tray because that will save a lot of lost little screws and other things. Um, so that concludes the, the, the film on the minimalist, the Jeb Adams minimalist uh, 
tool set up for, you know, and that's, it is minimalist, it's, those are the things that I go to first. Then when I find out what the actual job is going to be, then, uh, you know, I direct, uh, I direct my toolkit to that. So I hope that uh, this has been of some value to you. I do put uh, my films into chapters on a, on a page so that you can go and uh, you don't have to watch the whole view, you know, the whole 20 minute video to find out, you know, to find the three minute section you want or the one minute section you want. You can go to chapters and that gives you uh, a very good approximate of where you, of what you're looking for, of where it is. So thank you for watching and uh, please do come back again. I've already asked for all the good stuff and I've mentioned the legal stuff. So in closing, I wish you all a, a really great day, a, a, an amazing uh, time in your continuing adventure, whatever your adventures, you know, whatever you've decided your adventures are to be. And uh, y'all come on back again. And uh, for now, I'll bid you adieu. And uh, adios, amigos. Gracias.